The goal of the study is to investigate technical possibilities of increasing long-term planetary habitability, carrying capacities as workforce and industrial productivity for further expansion of our biosphere to new planetary bodies. The amount of cells and organisms that can assemble from a substrate is determined by the limiting chemical element quantity. The chemical composition of most biosphere substrates, terrestrial planets and maybe big gas giant moons, suitable for terraforming and full-scale long-term inhabitation, for our future generations is very far from optimal for maximal productivity of life, both in this and other planetary systems. As there is no economic way of making hydrogen, nitrogen, and other life ingredients from heavier elements, the cheapest and most realistic way to provide maximal biological and uh, industrial productivity over a planetary system life cycle is to import the limiting chemical elements by planetesimals for direction operations pre or to any other terraforming operations. Asteroid comets and other planetesimals material is diverse in chemical content and has much more total mass than a terrestrial planet, thus can provide surface chemical composition optimal for life to develop a dense photosynthesizing layer on all available surfaces of all biosphere substrates in a planetary system. Thus, the main principle limiting factor for providing surface chemical composition optimal to achieve maximal biological and industrial productivity of a planetary system during all its remaining life cycle is the energy required uh, for plant the planetesimal subdirection operations. Also, planetesimal subdirection operations can adjust planetary rotation period and tilt by striking planetesimal tangentially to its biosphere substrate, desired equator with a high velocity, strengthen planetary magnetic fields, and help other terraforming tasks. The most technically detailed description yet of planetesimal subdirection operations was published by Dr. Robert Zubrin in 1993 based on NERVA type 5000 megawatt nuclear thermal rocket engines, calculating mass, energy, and time required for a 10 kilometer diameter ammonia rich asteroid delivery to Mars, depending on its initial orbit. According to the loss of orbital mechanics, the more distant the orbit is, the more time but less energy is required to deliver a planetesimal to the destination biosphere substrate. Also, the more distant from a star, the more rich in volatiles, the planetesimal is. As well as more numerous and uh, the total mass corresponding to the lunar orbit is higher. Yet, the amount of all the nuclear fuel discovered on Earth is rather little compared to the scale of the energy requirements for providing all biosphere substrates, surface chemical composition, rotation parameters, and magnetic fields close to optimal. What is more, the amount of nuclear fuel available might be the principal limiting factor for the final stages of interstellar colonization missions, thus must be preserved for that enabling the possibility of using concentrated beam solar power as the energy source of planetesimal subdirection operations for terraforming can increase their possible scale to many orders of magnitude. A planetesimal or direction mission architecture might consist of first a planetesimal took spacecraft PTSS with a propulsion system, legs with hooks to mount on the planetesimal, dual in rig to extract propellant and deployable photo receivers covering the targeted planetesimal upon arrival and providing power for propulsion and other systems. Second, a power harvesting and beaming system, PHBS, based on an ultra-thin nanofoil orbital Fresnel lens with a flexible optical fiber collimator or a solar-pumped laser, tracking the two spacecraft photoreceivers array with a beam to power it continuously during all the mission. The PHBS lens system orbit is determined by two factors. The closer it is to the star, the less surface required to collect the same power, decreasing the system mass and cost in square proportion from the orbit radius, but proximity to a star is limited by the temperature and which it can maintain the mechanical properties and the control system operation. The power housing concentrator might be based on a momentum damper, for example, Mercury, quite a limited surface, or on an orbital Fresnel lens with flexible optic fiber collimators, which might operate as a race, which can allow orders of magnitude increased surface to collect solar power. The PTSS propulsion system might evolve from steam rockets to ion thrusters, then to relativistic particle accelerators, increasing technical complexity and efficiency, consuming less fraction of planetesimals as propellant. A most uh, common planetesimal redirection mission concept might be the following. The PHBS is launched from Earth, delivered to the near-Sun orbit about the Mercury orbit scale and deployed there. The orbital velocity of the PHBS is calculated lower than compensated the solar gravity for that orbit, because another force it must compensate is the solar wind and sunlight pressure on the large light harvesting lens in order to achieve almost uh, or even exactly passive orbit maintenance. 
the PTSS with some initial reservoir of propellant enough to reach the targeted planetesimal is launched from Earth, deploys the photoreceivers array on an orbit around Earth, then is found and tracked by the power beam from the PHBS concentrator continuously. Although much delayed, uh, there will be a sophisticated negative feedback system always decreasing the mismatch error between the PTSS photoreceivers array center and the PHBS beam center, determining by the power intensity gradient. The propulsion system most likely some version of an ion thruster accelerates the PTSS to a targeted trans Neptunian object, Tino, reaching nitrogen, hydrogen, and other volatiles, or other required limiting chemical elements. The power beam tracks the PTSS, providing it with electricity during the whole mission. The PTSS can and should use all gravity assist uh, orbital maneuvers around each gas giant to save propellant energy and time. When reaching the targeted TNO, the PTSS decelerates and approaches it with a decreasing velocity relative to the targeted planetesimal. And after the final deceleration, almost run out of propellant, mounts on it uh, using robotic legs with hooks, and covers the planetesimal with deployable photoreceivers, which also decreases its evaporation while approaching to the star later. Then uh, it drills the planetesimal material with the drilling rig using the shredded planetesimal material as propellant, melted, evaporated, and accelerated using the concentrated beamed solar power received. By adjustable propulsion direction, the PTSS helps to compensate the planetesimal rotation in order to make the photoreceivers array oriented uh, at the most efficient angle to the beam. Then the planetesimal is accelerated by the PTSS mounted on it through the optimal trajectory in terms of energy to Mars, Venus, or other destination by sphere subject. When the planetesimal is approaching and put on the course to collide the destined by sphere subject under the required angle, tangential to the by sphere subject's desired equator to adjust the planetary rotation in most cases, the PTSS system with the full propellant reservoir can detach from the planetesimal and be ready for the next planetesimal redirection mission. Physical principle limiting factors for scaling and solar powered planetesimal subdirection terraforming for terraforming includes uh, scaling propulsion systems. This is uh, not expected to cause any considerable problems itself, as there is no need uh, for a much bigger ion thruster or other propulsion system, as all the dark side of a targeted planetesimal can be covered with an array of small deployable ion thrusters or other propulsion systems. The jet propulsion thrust angles must be highly controllable in order to compensate the planetesimal rotation around its axis. To keep it oriented with photoreceivers towards the beam and with the jet outwards. Iron thrusters can theoretically use any evaporated ionized material with more or less efficiency. Scale, second, scaling power systems, the only principal physical limit that uh, we can observe is that um, the size of the power housed in orbital lens is limited by its gravitational collapse, which depends on material properties, the compression strength of the orbital Fresnel lens skeleton. Then astronomical stability of uh, power housed in orbital lenses. And then distance uh, for beaming power with respect to the angular beam tracking precision. The sunlight pressure acceleration can be compensated by a relatively little fraction of decreased orbital velocity of the PHBS. A more difficult problem is to prevent the PHBS lens capsize because the beaming angle is always changing and the concentrated solar power beam also creates pressure and has a leverage. Double beams in opposite directions can mitigate uh, this problem. Rotation of a lens around its axis can solve this problem but uh, will cause difficulties orienting the lens and make beaming point in tracking precision even much more difficult. The PHBS orbital Fresnel lens orientation perpendicular to the solar photons flow Orbital stability and capsize prevention can be solved much easier if to connect many PHBS with ultra thin lightweight cables into chain orbiting around the star. Thus, a united chain will have tensions distributed over a large distance and time, neutralizing orbital perturbations. This will also decrease the requirements on the beaming angles ranges, making them lower, as the PTSS might receive the beam any time from the best oriented PHBS and when the next PHBS becomes better oriented, get found and powered by the beam. 
next beam. The main principal limitation for such kind of operations is the beam pointing and tracking angular precision with respect to increasingly delayed feedback, increasing with the interplanetary distance range. The beam pointing and tracking angular precision de determines the feasible distances of transmitting the concentrated beam solar power, thus the amount and the composition of the available material for the solar power plant is most of direction uh, for terraforming. It can be improved by mechanical path manufacturing precision increase by the point and tracking system angular uh, mount uh, scale linear sizes increase, thus mass and cost increase, or preferably by some innovative solutions. According to Dr. Penigin, modern technologies allowed about uh, one milli arc second order of magnitude remote objects tracking angular precision, which is plus minus five multiplied by 10 to minus nine power radians for Ceres orbit and the other main belt asteroids. Uh, this is about uh, plus minus two multiplied by 10 to the third power meters uh, error. And after track, a photoreceiver of 10 to the fourth power meters diameter order of magnitude. But the, for the Cooper belt uh, asteroids, where volatile rich planetesimals begin, which is more than an order of magnitude more distant and more than an order two of magnitude more massive than the main belt. The problem becomes on the edge of modern technological capacities. With a Kuiper belt object ranges about 40 astronomical units or six multiplied by 10 to the 12th power meters as average, the error corresponds to plus minus three multiplied by 10 to the fourth power meters. Such an error is uh, of comparable order of magnitude with the planetesimals and photoreceivers diameters. The inner boundary of the award cloud, 2000 astronomical units, is two orders of magnitude more distant than modern tracking technologies. Precision can allow to follow a photoreceiver on a planetesimal with a focused power beam, as far as we know. Large scale infrastructure enabling solar powered planetesimal subdirection operations for terraforming follows the economy of scales and also becomes technologically easier with the growing scales. It uh, can and should be launched with some variation of the Umiski's general planetary vehicle, a telescopic orbital launch ring built around all the equator of this and all other biosphere substrates that can provide at least five orders of magnitude cheaper orbital launch in terms of resources, energy, and other objective physical parameters than modern launch systems are capable of, but uh, on a very large scale. Such scale of cargo flow from a planetary surface to its orbit will be required for planetesimals or direction for terraforming and interstellar colonization tasks. The farther from the sun, the cheaper in energy for delivery and the more rich in volatile planetesimals are. So providing ways to increase the power beam angular tracking precision or interplanetary distances to one or uh, two and more orders of magnitude from achievable with modern technologies can open incredible prospects for volatile rich TNOs delivery to import the limiting chemical elements for terraforming. Deeper fundamental understanding and development of technical solutions to increase the feasible distances of solar-powered planetesimal subdirection operations can have profound effect on terraforming research, making the field much more feasible and attractive, accelerating works for sustainable cosmic expansion of our future generations.